In the UK, 10 million people are members of a gym. Most will go casually, 10% won't go at all. But for some, in all sorts of ways, the gym has become a way of life. Lockdown has meant that way of life had to change. And with gyms expected to be among the last businesses to emerge, a new normal looks a long way off. So why have these people depended on the gym? And how have they survived without it? This is Eleanor Smith. She's gone from powerlifting at Durham University to lockdown life in Essex. I wanted to know how well had she coped with the transition. Some people might imagine a powerlifting gym to be a bit of an intimidating environment. What's it been like for you? I think there's a massive sense of community, um, although it's still very competitive because often you're going against these people in uh, the competitions. Um, everyone, you know, helps each other and, you know, shouts and supports someone for a big lift. If someone, you know, looks like they're slightly struggling to get up from a squat or something, everyone will be, you know, cheering and shouting, come on. That makes you, you know, want to, really want to lift it. It makes you proud to get to share your achievements with people. Come on, come on! You mentioned the competitive element to the team. What was the last competition you went to? It was the Northern University's Powerlifting Championship. We think it was probably because of the mumps that I uh, that showed on my face a couple of days after the competition. But I kept violently being sick. Um, and I threw up about nine times. I, I was sick just before the first squat. And then in between each lift, I, was, I threw up. So I was having to run to the bathroom and back. My friend Karina, who's in the 72 kilogram weight class for the women, um, she was she, she was there with me when I was uh, practicing my lifts um, and when I was being sick she was like oh no and she went to get someone and brought a mop while I just kept focused on the lift. Everything you've got. Go on all the way, go on. Yeah. yeah. Strong pull there. Yeah, it never came into anyone's mind that, that this would be the time to stop. <laughs> so I've been doing uh, skipping um, and I've, I've been doing like circuits with that, uh, with boxing as well. I've been doing cycling, um, I've been doing running. It's, it's not the same structure, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a thing you have to, you have to want to do yourself. I'm probably not completely adjusted because I'm still checking the news every day to see when the gyms are going to open. For Eleanor, a fitness community had brought expectation as well as encouragement. But I wondered if some sort of digital community was possible, if those barriers imposed by lockdown could be broken down with technology. To find out, I talked to the founders of Kooks, a gym management software. There's a company within the industry called MyZone. Now, they provide basically a, a, a heart belt. And that's very, very popular in a lot, of, a lot of gyms. And we're currently working with them to integrate their product for use with Zoom to try and reintroduce some of that community element and some of that competitive element into the home training environment as well. So can you ever recreate that gym community at home in the same way? It's not, it's not the same. Many of the facilities have become mini tribes, if you will. And... Uh, the people within them feel very, very, uh, um, there's a strong affiliation and a bond between them. And, and you're not going to get that virtually. It, human beings like each other and want to be together. And, and they miss that. They're, they're missing each other. For Eleanor, the gym's a place to take part and to be part of something. For Lucy Granger, a vlogger, it's a space to be yourself. I had recently been diagnosed um, with PTSD um, and severe depression um, and a few other things. Um, so I decided to take some time out of my full-time job um, just to focus on myself. Um, and that's when I found going to the gym was really helpful. That fitness environment when you're going to the gym, is um, it's that mindset you can go to leave all your bad thoughts there, come out of it feeling really fresh. And it's that somewhere you can go as your safe place. So by not having that, I felt very on my own and quite panicked that I didn't really know what to do. Um, so 
I have turned our garage into a bit of a home gym. I'm really thankful that I am quite lucky to have that environment where I can work out at home and I know other people don't. So I am quite privileged for that. Home workouts have given Lucy some measure of stability, but she misses her safe space. To make matters worse, she's just learned she's losing her job. For somebody who's always confined to the same walls, um, it can really like debilitate on your mental health, especially like depression. I have three weeks left in my job, which is obviously quite upsetting because there's things that, you know, I was due to move house like three months ago, it hasn't happened. Um, you know, I'm now going to be jobless. I now can't take my PT exams because everywhere's closed. And the fact that I haven't got the gym just to go and, you know, work out, I can't express how impactful it is on like any anxiety and depression because pe people like us don't want to feel like you know we people with anxiety like to have control of things and um, now we're not in control of anything it's really really hard um so I feel like the gym when it does reopen is going to be really helpful for so many of us like Lucy Jack Weitzman's used the gym as a physical space to help his mental health Jack was diagnosed with severe asthma at just two years old. He spent the next 15 years of his life in and out of intensive care, leaving a legacy of depression and PTSD. I, I got into fitness uh, in school when I started going with my friends. And then um, since I went to uni, I've been going pretty consistently. I started going by myself more often though. Um, and I've, yeah, always kind of enjoyed training by myself. <laughs> Exercise has helped my mental health, especially on the days when I didn't feel so great. I would notably feel better after training, but I think, you know, overall, just training consistently has helped my mental health stay at least higher than it could have been. You know, I sometimes should take rest days for my physical body to recover, but the effects on my mental health are so good that I, um, I just can't help but train. When I heard the gyms were closing, I was very stressed um, and worried about how I was going to manage the next months because um, training has been such a big part of my routine up until then. Just before we went into lockdown, I bought some home weights and uh, a bench and a bar and I've been able to do just the main things that I've been doing at the gym, so the structures stay pretty much the same, hopefully. It's the process of going to the gym that Jack misses. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to going back to the gym, even though I've got um, a good setup here. It, a important part of the gym process has been sort of getting out of the house um, and having somewhere I can go to feel better I suppose. It was an easier way of me to leave uh, my sort of current mental or emotional state at home and I would it'd be a process of leaving the house going to the gym and you know a change of scenery has always helped but um, I've had to adapt whilst at home uh, but I, yeah I do miss being able to go out and go to the gym. But how have people with chronic physical conditions been affected? To find out, I've got in contact with Stacey Weeks, a Pilates instructor from Devon. Stacey trained as a dancer, but her hopes of turning professional ended in a car accident. A second collision, years later, sent her through the doors of a Pilates studio and into a new career. I kept going back to the doctor, I'll just take some more paracetamol, take some more painkillers. I knew there was genuinely something not right about my body because, you know, uh, we, we know our bodies well as dancers. I ended up going to a Pilates class. You, you don't have to be a certain size, type, shape, age to do Pilates. You just want to be able to move or be able to move well in the body that you've got. So what kind of impact has lockdown had on people's bodies? 
this apparatus is highly specialist and requires somebody to help you to move on it. We have to choose spring settings according to our clients. We have to change and pick and choose that depending on how, a body, how their bodies are coping. You work with the body that you have in front of you. So, and I've got clients that can't access online, any of the online stuff purely because they can't have their internet's not good enough. But I haven't seen them for eight, nine weeks because, and, and I'm worried about them, you know, how they're moving. They're like, oh, you know, I'm okay. But I know as soon as I see their bodies moving, I'm going to be like, oh, we're back to square one again. Stacey's all too aware of the impact of lockdown, but she's adamant she won't open her doors until September. My brother uh, lost his father-in-law to this disease um, and it was heart it was literally heartbreaking. Um, sorry. Um, it, the messages that were going to and fro, my mum was very upset because she couldn't hug my brother. She couldn't, um, she couldn't hug my sister-in-law and to be honest, this bit, the, the ninth, so the 16th of March, my studio closed the doors because I couldn't, I didn't want to be responsible for that, for any of my clients. Ben Brand runs a spinal recovery program from his personal training gym. Like Stacy, he knows technology doesn't hold all the answers. Remote therapy sessions are um, incredibly difficult for obvious reasons. And as a result, there are a lot of people um, in a lot of pain at the moment and, and you can't provide via Zoom a session of, of um, physiotherapy, um, physical therapy that you can obviously in person. The movements are so finite and so um, delicate. It's only the next best thing. That's all it can be at the moment. But is the next best thing always enough? Not everyone thinks so. In fact, a petition calling on the government to let gyms reopen has been signed by well over 100,000 people. One of them is the ex-UKIP politician, Suzanne Evans. She says the closures have been debilitating. As someone who suffers from osteoporosis and osteoarthritis, what's been your experience of lockdown? Very, very different from normal life. I do Pilates, I do yoga, I've been walking, um, but it doesn't really compensate for what I normally do, which is, um, in the main, get in the pool. To anyone who doesn't understand, it sounds crazy, but it is almost like a miracle cure. You are getting your heart rate up, you're exercising quite hard, but you've also got the support of the water to support your joints, but you've also got the resistance of the water to build up your muscles. When I went down the stairs the other day, I couldn't just walk down the stairs. I had to do one step at a time, like you know, somebody much older. Um, and and it's, it's those kind of things. I can see that there's been a gradual decline in my health over the period of lockdown. Suzanne thinks Jim should have reopened in May. It's this one size fits all approach, which I'm afraid I think we've seen quite a lot of through this pandemic. You could certainly open some parts of a gym, like the pool, um, like the uh, classes that I do, Pilates, yoga, aerobics. I think they would be pretty safe. Frankly, my lifestyle, my health, my mobility, my ability to be pain free is far more important to me, I think, than um, you know, I think, I think I'm more likely to get ill that way than I am to get, get, get through coronavirus, to be honest. And that's a risk assessment I'm, I'm prepared to make. But if it's not one you don't want to make or somebody else doesn't want to make, just don't go to the gym. It's not rocket science. It might not be rocket science, but I was still keen to get a scientific perspective on Suzanne's solution. That's why I've reached out to Dr. Simon Clark. Not only is he a well-known virologist, he's also a keen gym goer. A yoga studio has fewer things to handle, fewer touch points. Or well, you've got the floor, obviously, in the mats, but you've got the floor and the mats in a gym as well. But you don't have the weights, you don't have the machines or the treadmills or the bikes, things like that. Things that people will touch. So I don't think you're at much risk in the swimming pool. It's chlorinated, and providing it's chlorinated enough, that will get rid of the virus. But the changing rooms are probably a... Uh, a bigger threat to people. So with that in mind, what do you think about the petition calling for gyms to reopen? I think I, it's not something I would sign. You're in an environment where they're under physical stress, so they'll be breathing heavily. They could emit uh, mucus and spit, basically. And any of that gives you a, a, a higher chance of picking up this coronavirus. Governments aren't keeping things closed for the fun of it. And I think that, that uh, there is a perception in many quarters in society, including gym users, that they're being picked on or treated unfairly. That's not the case. At the time of recording, no one knows when the government will let gyms reopen. Speculation ranges all the way from July to the autumn. It's just another layer of uncertainty for the people who've depended on the gym. 
since lockdown started April wise I was thinking okay well maybe May they'll open maybe June then maybe July I've got my heart set on July my life has been on hold until the gym opens so uh, autumn's a long time to wait if it wasn't open until like the end of the year or autumn I think that's causing me quite a bit of a panic at the moment to me that's quite concerning because I'm going to have to find other ways to exercise or to manage my mental health I think if I went on like this till September I'd just be literally wouldn't be able to get downstairs wouldn't be able to walk probably be in intense pain it actually makes me feel really quite quite worried and upset if the gyms are shut until autumn I'll just have to keep doing what I'm doing and training at home but um, I definitely look forward to being able to go back. Mm -hmm.